Hello! This is uh, the first of many videos about uh, miniature work on our new movie Splashback. It takes place at the NASA complex on Florida. And today I'm going to show you how I built the launch control building. It's this building right here. And you've probably seen it in movies, you know, the guys are sitting in front of their desks and computers and uh, taking care of the launch. But don't get it mixed up with the mission control, which is actually in Houston, which is probably more popular in movies because, you know, I don't know, Ed Harris was in it and every movie, when they say, uh, uh, Houston, we have a problem, that's the one they're contacting and not the one I'm building today, which is in Florida. All right, let's start. Of course, the first thing was to gather as much uh, visual reference as I could. I, I found photographs on, in, on the internet. And then I started to basically draw the building in uh, Adobe Illustrator. I decided what the size of the building will be. And then I basically had to unwrap it and uh, draw each side that I will need flatly on this piece of digital paper. And this is the design that I will later cut on my laser cutter. <coughs> Preparing the design for laser cutting is actually pretty simple because there's only two things you, you need to worry about. Some lines are gonna be cut all the way through the material and some lines are just gonna be engraved. And it's good to separate them into different layers. In this photograph I saw they have uh, these garage doors and entrances of some kind uh, on the bottom of the building. So I decided to draw them as well and they will just be engraved into the material. And now it's time for laser cutting. I'm using the Flux Beambox Pro, that's the laser cutter I have. And the process of cutting uh, actually goes very fast. I think the whole design was probably cut in 10 minutes. Here on, on the windows you can see the actual speed of cutting, it's, it's going pretty fast. This is a 3mm birch plywood. And it's probably the best material for laser cutting. I used to use MDF, but it's a bit tougher. It takes longer to cut and it leaves the charcoal edge, right? Charred edges. And with this, the edges are perfectly clean and they don't leave any residue on your fingers. And then you just pop the pieces out of the machine, which feels like you opened the kit that you bought. Only, only you made it. Then it's time to start building. I like to work fast. Uh, I'll admit I'm not the most precise uh, model builder uh, around. So I use hot glue gun for connecting the pieces. And uh, admittedly, it's a sloppy tool. You know, it just leaves a lot of residue and stuff. But I don't really care because I, I use it on the inside, you know, just to support the pieces. And on the outside, it's not even seen. But it dries extremely fast and it allows me to just keep moving. Even super glue is not that good for connecting wood, you know. And don't even get me started on wood glue. I would just wait for half an hour for each connection I have to make. In the corners I would usually glue uh, some leftover piece of, of uh, plywood just to give more support. And also it forces the corner into the 90 degree angle. And slowly the upper floor of the building was taking shape. I connected the windows to the other part of the building. And then it was time to glue the roof. Even though it's looking like I'm gluing the bottom, but it's upside down. I was saving a little bit on the materials, so I used an old dirty piece of MDF for the roof. But I'm building this miniature for the film, right? And I uh, know exactly which shots we are going to do. And I know for a fact that the roof is not gonna be seen at all in the movie. Of course I'll put some AC units on the roof just for the fun of it, but this whole building is just one of the buildings and it's gonna be, you know, on the side of the shot and it's not gonna be important at all. So I'm cutting corners wherever I can just to save time, because I don't wanna work on this movie for another four years. All right, now I'm uh, laser cutting, well, the laser is laser cutting the garage doors I drew and I'm apparently doing the Instagram story or a post. You know, you should maybe follow Slice of Life on Instagram because I'm, I'm posting uh, some other miniatures there and, uh, you know, stories on what we are currently working on. So yeah, consider following and subscribing here on YouTube if you're not already and, and click on that f stupid bell. What is that bell even for? And, and the stories. Why did YouTube also have to put stories, you know, because they gotta be trendy. Because the kids today don't have an attention span to watch a 15 minute video. Now everything has to be like 30 seconds long. I'll never make a YouTube story. Okay, that's a lie. I already did try it in the, in the desperate attempt to get more views. And it, it didn't work and now I just feel ashamed. I don't understand this world anymore, but so what was I? Uh, yeah, yeah, NASA building. So yeah, this building has this uh, amazing stairs. I would almost say magical stairs on the side. So I modeled them in 3D using just simple boxes and simple shapes and separated all the parts for printing. This program is called Cura. It prepares the file for printing and then the printer well printed it. And then logically I, I had to connect them all together. I, I used super glue for this plastic and I 
very nicely, you know, covered everything with my hair so you wouldn't see what I'm doing. But these are the finished stairs. I also printed some additional files that go around the windows. And then it was time for painting. And um, you know what? I I'll, I'll just go grab a beer. D don't go anywhere, it'll be a second. All right, I'm back. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're doing these voiceovers, your mouth gets dry. What can you do? All right, so obviously I spray painted everything gray, which is a primer. It's like a base color. And then, even though I said I don't really care about the roof, I couldn't resist uh, to put uh, a, a couple of AC units and some uh, ventilation ducts and pipes and stuff like that. These are all 3D printed, of course. Some of them I modeled specifically for this building, but some of them are actually reused all the way from Slice of Life. A couple of these air conditioning units that I modeled way back for, yeah, for the sci-fi buildings. And I can also use these ventilation thingies to cover the ugly screw holes, because as I said, I use the leftover piece of MDF for the roof. And of course, they also need the roof uh, exit for their cigarette breaks. I had these thin pieces of plastic laying around, so I cut some square pieces and uh, glued them to the roof as well. I thought it, it will give some layering to the roof. And when I'm editing, I'm always speeding all the clips, because I'm afraid it's gonna be too boring to watch everything in real time. Because here, this is in real time. I'm just pressing on this and, and then I'm pressing some more and it goes on and on. Uh, then, I, then I press with another finger and I'm just pressing and pressing. It's depressing. There are these three very specific uh, antennas on, on the corner of the building and I also 3D printed them and glued them on the corner of my building. Wow, this is, this is really some quality narration right there. Well, here's the uh, fence so somebody wouldn't fall from the building. That's at least that's something new that you haven't seen before. Then I was finished with the build and it was time to freshen it up with some more primer. Now I'm painting it for real. I'm using an airbrush and I just mix some white paint and I'm slowly spraying it all over uh, the miniature because this building is basically white. And you know, in my opinion, white is a problematic color because this is a building that is getting used every day. And they are probably, you know, painting it on a regular basis, they're taking care of this building. It's not a, an old, deserted building. And when something is old and abandoned, uh, there's a lot of texture to it. You can put a lot of rust, a lot of stuff on it to make it look realistic. But when something is so white, like this, it's basically boring. And it's hard to paint something like that. So after I gave everything a simple coat of white, I decided to do some paneling again, but this time with paint. I cut a template from cardboard and just sprayed these square uh, uh, squares. And I could somewhat regulate the opacity of gray paint by the duration of spraying on each spot and the distance of my airbrush from the uh, uh, subject. Yes, very good. Then I took a step back and I realized it looks uh, stupid and cartoony. So I took the white paint again and toned it down a lot. I removed the masking from the windows and revealed the uh, primer beneath. But I'm not gonna bother with uh, painting the windows because this looks pretty good. And then I decided to slap some paint on these garage doors. I'm almost always too lazy to mask things properly, so I just used this cardboard template again and just moved it, you know, from corner to corner. And then I waited for the first door to dry before I went to the... S ah, no, no I didn't. I immediately went to the second one even though I risked the possibility of smearing the paint all over the place. Well, what can I say? And now it was time for dirtying up the building, because even though they take care of it, you always gotta, you know, put some dirt on it, just so it looks more realistic. And especially, you know, uh, for, the, for the films, you should even overdo the distressing, because camera kinda loses, you know, some of the details. At least that's what I've learned from my experience. So yeah, don't be afraid to dirty things up. Ah, yes, one of my favorite tricks for distressing things. You take a piece of the dishwashing sponge, you dip it in brown paint, and then you lightly touch the corners of your model to produce instant realistic rust. Oh, this, you know, this is what it's all about. All this priming and spray painting and stuff, that's like generic stuff, but this, 
This is where the magic happens. Of course, it might be the beer talking. And we can't forget about the roof. We need to take great care when putting rust on air ducts, because the roof is never going to be seen in the film. I mixed up some dark wash with the hope it will run into the corners and make them darker. It more or less did what it was supposed to do. And then in the end it was time to glue these, uh, these uh, shutters or whatever they are. And of course the magical stairs. And with that the building was done. There is nothing more to say apart from thank you for listening to my ramblings. And I'm leaving you with the thought that this is just the first video of many that I will make about the production of miniatures for this film. Please leave a comment, I heard it's good for some algorithms or something. And if you don't know what to write, you can always say that I screwed up and made my building shorter than the original. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night.